Okay, let's have a look at this AQA mechanic stroke energy question from um, the physics A level. All right, so pause the video and read the question. All right, so hopefully you've done that. We're being asked to calculate the um, time it takes the cyclist to do something. Okay, so the cyclist goes from position A to position B, and they go they accelerate uniformly. Right, this is important. They accelerate uniformly, so they're not starting. They're not doing a constant speed, they're speeding up. And they cover a distance of 50 meters. They go from rest, which means they start at zero, and they end up at 6.7. So, as is my habit, I'm going to spell out the SUVAT to, so I can be sure of all the, the data I have got. They cover a distance of 50 meters. They start at rest, therefore they start at zero meters per second. Their final velocity is 6.7. Their acceleration is unknown, and the time it takes them is unknown, and it's the time that I am looking for. Okay, so now it's time to break out the equation sheet and have a look at the SUVA equations. Hopefully, we can see that the simplest one, or the easiest one to go for, would be this one. So it is S equals U plus V over 2, all multiplied by time. So I just have to rearrange this for time, so that would be divide both sides by this entire term which gets s over u plus v over 2 and that's all very messy so I can invert this and bring it up to the top so it becomes 2s it's the same as 2s over u plus v now subbing the numbers in 2 times 50 divided by 6.7 crunching the numbers gets me 14.9 something 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 basically 15 seconds okay so that's my answer for that part 15 seconds the key is to to uh, take account of all the information you've given the common errors students make with this is they don't spot it acceleration and they think they can just do speed equals distance divided by time or something like that and they think that that's the speed but that is a no no all right so calculate the kinetic energy relatively straightforward again get the equation sheet out we're on a half mv squared, a bit of brain freeze then, half mv squared. Um, we know the mass of the cyclist is 83 kg, so it's going to be a half 83 times uh, the velocity they achieve, which is 6.7 squared. Again, crunching the numbers, and we get, after rounding, 1863 joules, the unit's already given in the question. Okay, let's move on to the next bit. Again, pause the question to check if you want to read it. So, calculate the gravitation potential energy gained by the e-bike and rider between A and B. Okay, so again, some students have made mistakes with this in the past. They thought that the distance is this, or they tried to work out the component of gravity acting on the guy down the slope. And you can do that, and it would work. But the simplest thing to do is they have gone up by three meters, so the height gained is 3 meters, so the gravitational potential energy gained is just worked out using the GPE formula. So gravitational potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. The mass is 83, gravity is 9.81, height was 3. So again, crunching the numbers gets us 2, 4, 4, uh, 3 joules. 2, 4, 4. Three joules. Okay, next question. Between A and B, the work done by the electric motor is this many joules, and the work done by the cyclist pedaling is this many joules. Calculate the wasted energy as the cyclist goes from A to B. All right, so they're really setting us up for the last bit of the question, which is what are the waste causes of waste ener wasted energy? So the cyclist and the bicycle, sorry, the the electric motor and the bi and the cyclist are both doing some work. The total work they're doing is 5,300 joules plus 3,700 joules. So they're actually doing 5,300 plus 3,700. Look, notice I, I resist the temptation to sum these in my head. I'm very tempted to do it, but I know that whilst I'm thinking about lots of things going on, it's very easy for me to make small maths errors, and you see it all the time when marking papers. So slow yourself down and do, <laughs> do it properly, right? So again, don't have my calculator. Just to be absolutely sure, we're on 9,000 joules. 
that is the energy we put in. But what energy have we actually got out? Well, the cyclist gained this much kinetic energy, 1863. They actually had 1863 k kinetic energy. And they also managed to gain 2443 GPE. All joules, right? That's what they got out. So what does this add up to? Okay, so that adds up to four three zero six joules. So this is what they've actually got. But this is what they put in, right? So the lost energy is nine thousand. I say lost. Sorry, I should really say wasted or dissipated energy. Nine thousand joules minus four three zero six, which gives us an answer of four six. Or four. So four, six, four, four joules wasted. Okay, so how was this energy wasted? Well, one obvious cause, you've got to think the, the cyclist is whacking away up this hill. They're doing work against gravity, so they're doing work converting the chemical energy in their legs into GPE. Okay, so that's one example of the work being done. They're also doing work against friction, and there's all kinds of friction going on. So they're doing work against air resistance. which gets larger and larger the faster you go, so it could be quite considerable if they're going very fast. And they're doing work against um, anywhere else where there would be friction. So you have to think of a named example, right? So on a bicycle, you've got the uh, pedals here uh, and here, and you've got all this gearing mechanism here, and you have to transmit uh, energy through this chain. So it could be friction, within the gears. Now actually, I'm not sure I'm happy with that because it says state two causes of this wasted energy. Air resistance, I should really say work done against. So work done against air resistance and work done against friction within the gears. Within the, oh yeah, okay, we get the point. So um, this cyclist plus their electric motor did 9,000 joules of work. 4,000 joules of that, well, 1,863 joules were converted into kinetic energy. 2,443 joules were converted into gravitational potential energy. And another 4,644 joules were converted into, air uh, sorry, into work done against air resistance and work done against friction with the gears. That's why they should be riding a recumbent.